statute 14-51.3, use of force in defense of persons. And then they have their self-defense immunity provision in the statute as well, relief from criminal or civil liability. We're just focused here on the self-defense portion. Um, and it's really here in the first paragraph. So paragraph A reads, a person is justified in using force except deadly force. So as is common with self-defense statutes, the North Carolina statute, first it sets out the conditions for the use of any degree of force. What has to exist before any degree of defensive force can be justified, including non-deadly force. And then it adds additional conditions that have to be met before deadly defensive force can be made. So first we get the non-deadly force conditions. A person is justified in using force except deadly force, against another when and to the extent the person reasonably believes the conduct is necessary to defend himself or herself or another against the other's imminent use of unlawful force. What do we have so far in terms of the five elements of self-defense? Um, in, interestingly, we, we, we kind of have the element of innocence that you can't be the unlawful aggressor because you need to be defending yourself against an use of unlawful force. So, for example, if you're being, uh, if a police officer is using force to compel your compliance with lawful arrest, that would be a lawful force being used against you, and you wouldn't have any right of self-defense against a lawful force. So, um, similarly, if someone is defending themselves against your attack, their use of force is lawful, and you wouldn't be privileged to claim self-defense to justify your use of force against their lawful use of force. But North Carolina also has a separate statute that touches on innocence. So we'll turn back to that. So that's the first of the five elements, innocence. We have, of course, an explicit reference to imminence, that the threat you're defending yourself against has to be an imminent threat, meaning either actually in progress or immediately about to occur, not something in the past, not something speculative in the future that may never happen. Uh, proportionality, the question of the intensity of force involved, is treated structurally in this statute in the sense that first they define what's required for you to be privileged to use non-deadly force, and then they define what's additionally required before you're privileged to use deadly force. And that's what proportionality means. It distinguishes between non-deadly force and deadly force. Generally speaking, you can only use non-deadly defensive force against a non-deadly force attack, and you can't use deadly force unless you're subject to a deadly force attack. We'll see that in just a moment. And of course, we see also the reference here to reasonableness. You have to reasonably believe that the conduct is necessary. Do you have to be correct that the conduct is necessary? No, your belief, your conduct in self-defense doesn't have to be correct. We're not required to make perfect decisions in self-defense. We're required to make reasonable decisions in self-defense. So, we already see all five of the elements of self-defense in the North Carolina statute. And these same elements are in every statute. The only one we haven't come to yet is avoidance. Um, North Carolina has somewhat a complex relationship with the element of avoidance. It has a uh, somewhat complex framework regarding the legal duty to retreat. It's not really relevant to this particular use of force event. Um, but uh, if I have time, maybe I'll circle back to it. Generally speaking, North Carolina is a stand your ground state. There, there is a narrow exception. Okay, <clears throat> so that's all five elements of the claim of self-defense. That first sentence covers non-deadly force. The second sentence of this paragraph addresses deadly defensive force. However, a person is justified in the use of deadly force and does not have a duty to retreat, so there's avoidance, in any place he or she has a lawful right to be if either of the following applies. One, he reasonably believes that such deadly defensive force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm. So that's the definition of deadly force, right? Death, force likely to cause death or great bodily harm. When you're facing a deadly force threat, a threat likely to cause death or great bodily harm, that's one of the conditions before you're privileged to use deadly force in self-defense on top of all the other conditions you already had to meet before you would be privileged to use even non-deadly force in self-defense, right? All these elements are cumulative, folks. All the required elements are required. So either before you can use deadly defensive force, you either have to be facing in a deadly force threat, an imminent deadly force threat, or 
under the circumstances pursuant to statute 1451.2. What is 1451.2? It is North Carolina's defense of highly defensible property statute. So this is defense in your home, your workplace, or motor vehicle. Um, this particular video we'll be watching does not involve highly defensible property. Um, so I won't dive into this in much detail, except to point out that this is where North Carolina provides a legal presumption that the defender defending against a genuine intruder into their highly defensible property, their home, their motor, ve motor vehicle, or workplace is presumed to have had a reasonable fear of imminent death or serious bodily harm. That, that gives you most of the elements of self-defense, right? It's presumed that you had a reasonable fear, that's reasonableness, imminent, that's imminence, death or serious bodily harm. That's proportionality. You already wouldn't have a legal duty to retreat, so that's avoidance. Um, so the only element left really is innocence, and innocence is pretty much baked into the cake if you're within your highly defensible property defending against a forcible, unlawful intruder into the home. So that's the other circumstance in which deadly defensive force would be authorized under the South Carolina statute.